Right now, Adam Silver is usually considered the best commissioner that we have out of the four oldest sports, the four major sports. And the reason is that even though Adam Silver works for the owners, he's definitely a champion of the players. The players believe that he supports them. The players believe that Adam Silver listens to them. They believe that the commissioner actually has their best interests at heart, even if Adam Silver is paid by the owners. He doesn't give off the vibe that he's just a lackey for the owners, right? So they don't view him as a villain or an enemy. They view him as an ally. Silver's done a very good job positioning himself that way. Think about Roger Goodell. Early in Goodell's tenure, he was the law and order guy. I'm going to cut down on the nonsense off of the field. We're going to hand down punishments. We're going to clean up this league. That was a big part of his platform, basically. And he did that, and he created a lot of animosity around the players. And in the last 10 years, while clearly he's been in the owner's pockets, every time you see Goodell speak or hear him speak, he's waxing poetic about the players how great this player is. Softer here, a softer, kinder, gentler Roger Goodell, supportive of the stars, supportive of the players, congratulating them on great accomplishments. I mean, Goodell realized after those first five years that he had built up too much animosity with the players and the players didn't trust him to do anything. So now he's walking a better line. Think about David Stern. David Stern got the most done, probably, out of any commissioner ever. David Stern, while being hardline on so many examples of it's my way, I know what's right, get out of my way, okay? David Stern also became a champion of the players early. When he took over, one of the first things he said was, it's Magic, it's Larry, and everybody else get out of the way. And that only behooved two franchises and two stars. But he knew the success of this league has nothing to do right now about who's ever playing on the Pacers or who's ever playing on on the Kings. It's all about the Celtics and the Lakers right now and Magic and Larry, and we're going to build around them as the totem poles of this league. Ultimately became Michael. Obviously, in the 90s, it flourished with a number of stars, but he empowered the stars to be the biggest parts of the brand, the biggest parts of the league. The dream team in 92, which exploded the popularity of the NBA, was all because David Stern realized we need to make our stars the game, not the game itself. And because of that, the players felt like they, even though they were getting ramrodded in other ways, there was at least somebody who championed the players as the center point of the league. So the the commissioners that walk this line best ultimately are the most successful, and Manfred's terrible at this. The players do not think they've got an ally in him. He's been hardline commissioner as an owner puppet. He's basically dismissed the players time after time and what they care about and what they find important and why they're important. And that's why today in getting a deal done is absolutely vital to Rob Manfred. Manfred doesn't have the charm. He doesn't have the the type of personality that you want to listen to, that you want to sit down to hear speak. He's a little awkward. He's very stiff. He does not seem like a cordial guy. And because of it, I think it hurts him perceptually with the players. But the reality is also, he doesn't act like an ally for them. And so they're emboldened to fight against him and the owners since he's a symbol of the owners. They've got to get a deal done today or in short order for Rob Manfred's sake. Because if they miss time, if they miss games under his watch again, 
He's right there with the worst commissioners of all time.